Hi guys, this is Kid Toy Tester Dad, and I'm here at the Ozobot booth, and we have Nader, the CEO of the company. Hi, good to meet you. Good to meet you as well. Thanks for having us here. Um, this is by far the most beautiful booth we've seen at this entire toy fair. Oh, gosh, I'm loving this. Very high tech, and clean, clean, crisp lines, and of course, it's stocked with Ozobots. Um, so if you guys have seen our other videos, you'll see the Ozobot reviews. I'll put them into the comments below, so make sure you click on those and watch the previous ones. And you made a custom racetrack uh, that you can also download and check out yourself. Um, but what we'd love to know a little bit about the story of Ozobot and how you came up with this concept. Great. Well, I came up with it about probably about two and a half years ago when I was seeing my own daughters playing with, with their video games. And a lot of them, and it's a lot of the games were just them and the video game. You know, right. I was trying to think of how do I get them to interact socially a little bit more. Um, I want to still embrace the digital world. And so I thought if we can bring a physical component that can still play with the digital game, right. um, we can somehow bring social gaming back, bring the parents back into, into playing, and then continue to layer uh, levels of, um, of smart instead of actions. And, uh, right. So there's a lot of education built into this for the kids. It's not just a game and you go and zone out and play it. That's the whole idea. So we want it to kind of still kind of, it's, it's learning while playing. That's what we want to do. We want to kind of help have you still play because that's what it's all about. Right. And you can start to kind of get some basic understandings of programming, coding, robotic behavior while you're, you're, you're playing. Right. That's phenomenal. Okay, so we absolutely love these. I mean, they're super cute already. Plus, we were able to customize them. In the initial kit that we got, these two, and it had a series of white helmets. So yes. we've got our Hello Kitty bot, we've got a Barbie bot, uh, lots of new ones in the works. So we'd love to learn other ways that people in the community are doing this. And somewhere on the Ozobot you know, communities, there are places where we can upload and share photos and things that we've done. Yeah, well, we are, we're are we building all that right now. We okay. love, we have a, a lot of people are already uh, submitting stuff that we've been, we've been doing. Right. And we love that. That's, that's what it's all about. Our community is still small and young, but the, the more we can engage and the more they can help us uh, come up with their own ideas, um, the better we can become. Well, I guess the nature of your product makes your customers incredibly loyal. Because we, we absolutely love these things. And as a parent, I am so happy my kids are playing with this. Uh, my daughter came to me and she had a racetrack she built. And every three or four inches, it was a different command. And then she would tell me, Dad, okay, you're gonna, you're not gonna believe this. It's gonna do a 360 here. It's gonna go super fast. Then it's gonna go slow. Then it's gonna jump the track completely and run across and cheat and go to the other side. And I was like, no way. And yeah. she, she actually showed me, and then it did exactly what she said. And she felt a sense of liberty and total control over something because she understood this completely new language. That is awesome. That is awesome to hear. I love that you're doing that. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so what I'd like to do is if you can give us a tour of the booth and show us some of the really cool things that you guys are doing and especially what's coming out later this year. We're really excited about that. I would love to show you that. Okay, I see you've already got some racetracks drawn out here and uh, yeah. a bunch of little commands there. Actually, we just started uh, earlier today and people have been coming in and just starting to, to make their own and starting to understand what Ozobot is and starting to, to, to draw it. Um, the most important thing with our race tracks or with our drawing is that the lines have to be a little bit thicker, about five five millimeters thick. Okay. And if you really want to kind of pick up the codes, um, the colors need to be. Um, the, you got to find the right the right markers. Can you so, show us some of the the sharpies that are, are best for this? Sure. So if you use sharpie, it, it works with Crayola or anything. Okay. Um, you would you would need kind of the lime green one or the lighter blue one. They okay. will they will read codes way better with that. Red is fine and the black is the black. Okay. Um, you always need the black as the, as the base color. Um, but as you see here, um, these are all little codes on the end. These are all U-turn codes mm -hmm. that people drew. Come on, go show them. There you yeah, there go, you Ozo. Um, but the beauty of this too is that we can take Ozobot and put them right on our tablet. Um, and Ozobot is gonna start seeing the lines that we're gonna draw here. Ozobot just went really slow. Um, because it read that flashing lights. So Ozobot reads color on paper, it reads optical flashing lights on tablets. Right. And because it can read the optical lights, we're able to layer a le another level of intelligence to Ozobot where it can memorize 500 different optical codes and then execute them back. Wow, so you can make an incredibly long sequence of actions coded uh, on one dot. Yeah, you can, well, not co well, it, yes, There's, pretty much, so then Ozobot can learn it all. Right. And I can show you that in the con in the context of our Ozo group because we feel like music and dance is one of the coolest ways to, to express yourself. Right. So we introduced Ozo Groove and that also ties into a lot of our DIYs. 
with. We'll like stick with our own little one. Um, we uh, saw your initial videos that you guys had online of Ozobot dancing. That's yeah. what really got us excited. Awesome, love that. So here, this is our, our we'll just go to our little dance editor. Um, I will create a new dance. Let's go to, you can go to your own music library, pick whatever song you want, okay. but let's just go and pick one of these songs. How about a little, um, how about a little K-pop? Why not? So let's say we want Ozobot to start the dance with a little twist. We'll do a fast twist forward, followed by another fast twist forward. And then we want Ozobot to change colors. So let's go ahead and pick the lights. We'll make Ozobot turn yellow and then turn red. And then let's have Ozobot shake. We'll do a side shake fast, followed by a, another side shake fast. So I still have 480 more moves that I can give to Ozobot. Oh, okay, but so it's got a great counter, and then obviously the drag and drop functionality means you don't have to be an expert at coding to actually code right. Ozobot. But you need to kind of start to figure out what you want Ozobot to do to whatever song you want. Right. So we'll go to the dance floor, um, and I'll, you can activate five Ozobots. Well, let's go ahead and activate three of them for this, uh, for this song. I'll put Ozobots on their little activation dance pods. I'll put the little... And I will load what we just did. So what you see here is Ozobots now learning what right. we just told them what we did. And now they're ready to go. So we'll hit dance. And they are doing... Yep, they're doing the color changes just this program. And once they learn it, I can take them anywhere now. They don't need lines, they don't need anything because they've already memorized the code that we right. just told them to do. So and after you've taught Ozobot a series of codes, how do you clear the codes to start again? Um, so right now they're just gonna keep going because they don't know anything different. So right. they have to get another command to tell them to go ahead and stop. Right. So I gotta bring them back to the dance floor and go ahead and hit the stop command. So you just saw a quick little flashing light right. telling them you can, you can take a break now. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So it works seamlessly from paper to their tablets. Um, yeah. We've seen to do it with our iPhones as well. And it's super exciting that you've changed, I mean, you've made tactile paper and, and digital paper one thing. Yeah, that was the whole kind of idea. You know, we want to also figure out a way to elevate board board games. Right. Bring an intelligent game piece. You're not just dealing with a little tchotchke, a little, a little hat or a little, right. a little dog running around that you have to pick up and, and drop. You can have a, an intelligent game piece that can do a lot more than that. That's super um, exciting. Some of the cool things that we did on our whole DIY is something like this. You go to a Michael's or yeah. a Joanne's, you can buy little foam cores um, and just attach them right to your tablet. So this one are two little pieces attached to a tablet with a little tape. Um, and let's go ahead and bring Ozobot off it. And it will seamlessly jump on and off. Um, and uh, this form foam core you said was just really available at, at your local crafting store? Yeah. Um, let me get this guy in and just make him speed up. Let's speed this. Well, let's see if he's going to catch him. Yeah. This is a race that's definitely on. Here you go. <laughs> oh, he's going to pick up his speed code. Now, oh, they're going to have a Head little... collision. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Things like this is, is definitely what, what we would love to learn how to do more of. Um, these DIY tricks like the foam core. Yeah. That's what's so neat because you can go tablet to tablet, tablet to, to paper, to foam core. Um, kids can bring their own tablets and each one can, can, can start to figure out how they can make games where they can influence theirs or to go faster, maybe throw slow codes on their opponent to s slow them down or timeout features, whatever, all of the codes that are available to them. So I, I see in front of us, you've actually got uh, some printable racetracks going on here. Uh, yeah. From the website, I think that was one of our favorite features was to be able to download Butterfly and, and some of the other ones that jump across. Are there gonna be more available on, on the website? There is actually quite a lot that we're gonna be launching in the next month or so. Um, we're working on them right now. A lot of these ones are focused on a little bit more structures. These are all part of our lessons okay. um, that are introduced into uh, the STEM programs, after school programs, where it's kids get this all blank, and then they have to figure out how to color it to actually go down the, ra the right path to get to the finish lines. Um, wow. so these are much more structured, introduced into, uh, into after-school lesson programs. Things like this definitely empower parents to get the kids to play and make sure they're doing something structured and learning in. 
And obviously coding and engineering is, is pretty amazing. Well, that's what we feel. It is the foundation of, of the future. And if we can help kids learn basic programming, learn robotic behavior, and then little by little we can get them into structured programming, which is right. what our next Ozobots do, then we're, um, we're preparing our, our, our kids to lead us in the future. That's super exciting. Okay, so the girls want to know about customization. Being girls with trinkets and gadgets and things that they put onto their Ozobots, um, in 2015, what's going to be available for them to make their Ozobots even more personal to themselves? Uh, we have an entire DIY area that is designed to really show them how to take their, their, their blank skins to a whole new level. And I can show you some of the ones that we have done here. And, that will be, and we're introducing a lot of our, our new DIY um, videos to show kids exactly how to, how to create any of these. All right, let's take a look. Yeah, let's so come on over here. Okay, wow, this so is taking it to a whole zone. new level. Yeah, some funky, you know, you can actually start cutting them out into little holes. Um, and this is on my cool little Rasta Ozo. And R2-D2. My, my favorite R2-D2. This you need a 3D printer to, to create. But everything else you can pretty much do at a, from, a, from a Michael's a store. Right. Any of these that you like. Um, all of our big hair Ozos, because we love that when you're actually doing a lot of the Ozo groove and then the dance moves. Right. Cool to have big hair because they start to oh, really kind of groove it too. away. That is so cool. Um, so, as far as the skins themselves, where's the best place to purchase additional ones besides the ones that come in the kit? Um, they are available now through our website and through, uh, I think, Amazon. Okay. Amazon right now. Thank you. Yeah. As we create ours, um, where should we send them so that other people can also get inspired by the new things that we come up with? Well, on our website, there's a, there's a, um, a section in our game zone to, to upload anything new, any, any new tracks that you do, any new skins that you do, and we'd love to see them because as soon as we see them, we just share them with everybody with all of our social media as well and put them right on our website, especially the ones that are that are winners. Right, okay, so everybody, we're going to make sure we start following you on Facebook and Twitter and see what tracks that you guys are publishing. Please do, please do. Love that. 